Hello! In this video, we will look at the pipeline to RISC-V microprocessor. So recall that we uh, looked at a multi-cycle processor in the hopes of getting some speed up over the single cycle, and we we're disappointed. Now we'll look at pipelining, and we're going to find that this is much more effective. And in fact, pipelining is such a benefit that virtually all um, commercial microprocessors these days are pipelined. So, to understand pipelining, think back to our example of pipelining uh, laundry. If you had a bunch of loads of laundry to do, instead of uh, washing one and then drying it and then folding it and then putting it away and then starting the next, you could overlap those steps. So that one load is washing while the previous one was drying, while the one before that you could be folding, while the one before that you uh, are putting away. And that way you'd get four times the throughput. So pipelining uh, microprocessor is an example of temporal parallelism, where we're going to overlap steps to get a big speed up. We're going to divide our single cycle processor into five stages. We'll call them fetch, decode, execute, memory, and write back. And we'll put a pipeline state register in between each stage. <coughs> so if we think of a single cycle processor, we have to do all those steps, fetch, decode, execute, memory, and write back. Um, and it took about 200, if we just think about the longest parts of each, the fetch is mostly reading memory, that's about 200 picoseconds. Decoding is reading the register file, that's about 100. ALU um, and execute is 120, another 200 for memory, and a little bit more to set up with uh, writing the register file. So this uh, comes out to a little under 700 picoseconds, not counting um, the setup and clock to queue delay of the uh, register. So here, um, in a single cycle processor, it would take close to 700 picoseconds to do the first instruction, and then we could do the second one in about the same. For the pipeline processor, we're going to break it up into steps and we'll take the time for the longest step. So the longest step is to access memory. That takes 200 picoseconds. But once we've fetched the first instruction, then we can start fetching the second instruction uh, while we're decoding the first one. And the decoding involves reading the register file. I'm going to show that at the end of this 200 picosecond window, because later on I'm going to want to write to a register file in the beginning part and let them both happen in the same cycle. On step three, we can fetch the third instruction while we're decoding the second instruction, executing the first. On step four, we could be fetching a fourth instruction, decoding a third, executing the second, and um, doing memory read for the first instruction, and so on. So now we can overlap the instructions, and our throughput is about one instruction every 200 picoseconds instead of about one every 700 picoseconds. So there's a big speed up. Ideally, we might get a 5x speed up if we could truly break each instruction into five identical parts. That's hard to make things exactly balanced in practice, but we're still seeing a big benefit. So to understand uh, how pipeline processors work, it's helpful to have a little cartoon showing what's happening in each step. So imagine we ran this program starting with a load word, S2 gets a value with an offset of 40 from S0. Then we do an add, then a subtract, an and, a store, and an or. In this cartoon, I'm going to have the five different parts of the pipeline divided by registers. So in the fetch stage, we have an instruction memory, IM, and the gray will indicate that that block's being used. So we're using the instruction memory, and we're fetching load word. In cycle two, so the horizontal axis is indicating time, and the vertical axis is in indicating which uh, instruction we're doing. So in the second cycle, the register file is used in the second half to read out uh, 40 and S0. And the instruction memory is used to read out the add. Now in cycle three, looking down here, the instruction memory is reading the subtract. The register file is reading S9 and S10 for the add. And the ALU is doing the addition to add 40 and S0 for the load. In the fourth cycle, that's this column, 
instruction memory is fetching the AND. The register file is reading out T1 and S8. The ALU is doing an addition for the add instruction. The uh, data memory is being used for the load. In the bit cycle, the instruction memory is fetching the store. The register file, the second half of the register file cycle is being used to read S11 and T5. The ALU is doing a subtract for the subtract instruction. The data memory is not in use because an add doesn't need data memory. And the load word is writing to S2 in the first half of the cycle, and so forth. So this kind of cartoon lets us uh, figure out what the pipeline processor is doing on any given step. All right, so let's think about how we build this pipeline processor. We'll start by taking our single cycle processor, just like before, and I'm going to stretch it a little bit to make room to drop some registers in. So this is exactly the data path we had before, except stretched out a little. Now, I'm going to divide it into five chunks by dropping four registers to separate the chunks. And the first chunk is for fetch. That's where we're starting with the program counter reading out uh, from instruction memory, store that into the pipeline register, and simultaneously add four to the program counter to get ready for the next instruction. Then the first instruction would go on the decode stage, where we access the register file and do sign extension. Then on the third cycle, that first instruction would be in the execute stage, where we choose our sources and use the ALU. In the fourth cycle, it would be in data memory, reading and writing memory if need be. And the fifth cycle, it would be in write back, where we choose our result and then bring it back and write to the register file. The register file is a funny thing here because it lives in both the decode and write back stages because we're reading it in decode and we're writing it in write back. You'll notice that all the signal names here have uh, suffixes on F, D, E, M, or W to indicate which of these five um, pipeline stages we're in. And it's important that signals from only interact in the same pipeline stage, because otherwise you'd be uh, messing with um, one part of one instruction and a different part of another instruction, which doesn't make any sense. It's kind of like Ghostbusters, don't cross the beams. All right, so um, if you look closely at this, you might find a problem, and that is that when we get to write back, we're writing a result from the write back stage into an address that depends on the instruction in the decode stage. So we write to the wrong register. And to solve that, we're going to need to keep a copy of the destination register, RD, and run that through the pipeline alongside the rest of the data. So when we get to write back, we know not only what to write, but also where to write it. Here's a diagram where we've made that change in blue. So bits 11 through 7 are the destination register. And instead of feeding it straight to the register file, we run it through the pipeline stages alongside the data. So by the time we get to the write back stage and we have the answer result w that we want to write to the register file, we also have the proper register number rd for the write back stage that corresponds to that instruction. Let's assume that we're writing the register file on the falling edge of the clock and reading it on the writing, rising edge of the clock. And that way we can do a read and a write both in the same cycle, the read in the first half and the write in the second half. Now let's add control to this pipeline processor and we'll take exactly the same control unit as the single cycle processor. So this is exactly the same hardware we already developed for the single cycle processor. It puts out the various control signals that we knew of from the single cycle processor. And those are all in the decode stage right now because the control unit is based on the instruction in the decode stage. We need the immediate source right away in the decode stage to do the sign extender, but the other signals aren't needed until later. So 
we bring them into a pipeline register, and we get the same signal out. Now we've changed the suffix to E. So reg write D and reg write E and reg write M and reg write W are all reflecting the register write, but they're with respect to the instruction that's currently in that stage. So in the execute stage, we need to know ALU source, and we need to know ALU control, so that the um, ALU can do the proper thing for that instruction. Also, if it's a branch or a jump, that gets resolved in the execute stage based on the zero flag coming out of the execute stage. And that goes back to the program counter and could cause us to take a jump. And you'll notice that is an interaction between pipeline stages where the result in the execute stage of one instruction is changing the program counter downstream. And we'll have to be careful about that. The uh, memwrite signal continues on into the memory stage where it's the write enable to the data memory. And result source and reg write signals go on to the write back stage and are used uh, to write a result. So you see the control signals are traveling along through the pipeline with the data and they drop off where they're used.